Hey guys, Charai5 here, and today we are on the brink. Uh, this is the penultimate drawing for Inktober 2017, and it's been quite a journey. We are doing Frankenstein and his bride, or more accurately, uh, Frankenstein's monster and his bride, because a lot of people, uh, and I feel like th this is kind of common knowledge now, Frankenstein isn't the monster. Frankenstein is, is the name of the doctor. Well, not name of the doctor, because the name is his name is Victor. Uh, Frankenstein is the surname of the doctor who um, who created uh, the the monster that we nowadays call Frankenstein, but that Frankenstein is not the monster's name. In fact, the monster doesn't have a name. Um, although that there are, there are different um, different theories as to what the the monster's name was going to be, and it's funny because I think out of all the monsters, this was the one that uh, I kind of did a little bit not 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 so much more investigation because I wanted to, but because there was just so much information to be had. Um, be, and, it, and it's a really interesting case. I think, if I recall correctly, uh, the novel uh, actually has a very strange name. Frankenstein, the Modern Prometheus, or the Modern Prometheus. Um, the, the story is more so about the Doctor. It, and, well, it's named after the Doctor, but it it has more to do with the monster. And... It was written in the 1800s, when exactly I don't recall, uh, but I also know that it was written by a woman, which uh, to me was actually really awesome to learn, because, you know, you think of, you think of more, you know, I, I don't know what the word is, you think of older times, you know, you think 1800s, and you, you have a hard time believing uh, in anything of success having to do with women, because women were so oppressed back in the day, um, and in many ways they still are. Like it, it's it's so it's so incredible to me to think that it's not until recent years that women have started succeeding in you know things that you would have expected them to have already been able to. God, what am I trying to say? Um, y you expect women to have already found these successes, but I guess because of male oppre like I don't know, I don't want to get into politics about that right now. Um, but what I'm saying is, I, I find it incredible that in the society that we live in, it it's only now happening when women have always had this this ability to be great, and I it's incredible that we're just now allowing them, I think is more so what I want to say. Because they've always had the ability. I'm not saying like, oh, why are they just uh, presenting their abilities now? No, they've always had these abilities. And it goes to show because, you know, the woman who wrote, I forget the author's name, it was Mary something, I don't remember. She was an English author. Um, and I think she, she, her father might have been an author as well, a very famed author. Um, and a lot of people criticized her for that very reason like uh she published the novel uh anonymously as a lot of women uh did back in the and they still do um because for example jk rowling is a, is a very famous example uh where she she um she abbreviated her name so as to you know entice male audiences as well so that they wouldn't say like oh this was written by a woman i'm not interested you know um and i feel like the the author of, of frankenstein did the same thing uh, you know she didn't want to be outcast because she was a woman and you know people who didn't know praised the novel greatly and people that did know kind of shit on it and you know, couldn't really give a good reason why, <laughs> and some of them just bashed her for being, like, oh, she's she's tailgating on the success of her father, um, and to me, again, it was very strange to know that it, it had the title Frankenstein or the Modern Prometheus, uh, re the, the Modern Prometheus part is more so like a subtitle of the novel, like, it wasn't just called Frankenstein, and the reason for that is because it, it was kind of based on the idea of, uh, Prometheus, who was like an ancient, he was a Greek 
god or demigod, something like that, that kind of that brought fire to man. So basically, it's like uh, um, rised up against his creators, and you know, gave life sort of to to the mortals. And that's kind of the role that Victor Frankenstein plays in the novel. And it's funny how just, again, when it comes to social commentary, Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster, you know, are huge on that. They're very heavy on that, Um, seeing as how it's playing God or, you know, how far can science take us? It's not a matter of... uh, if it's possible, it's should we do it, you know, like br- creating life, bringing a, creating a brand new person from the remnants of others. And there are very di- many different iterations. And it's funny how like the original author uh, gives a very lengthy description of what Frankenstein's monster should look like. Um, and yet that's not the Frankenstein we know. The Frankenstein we know is based off of Boris Karloff's um Frankenstein. That was the name I was trying to remember yesterday, actually. Boris Karloff. Um, who was, you know, who portrayed Frankenstein in, like, 1930... Oh, God. I want to say 31, but I am i don't think that's correct. Anyway, um, I think that's the one we most associate it with, but it actually had very little... The monster that, that we see and that we think of, like, the green skin and all that, had very little to do with, with the author's original... Uh, vision of what the monster looked like. Uh, the monster was uglier looking. Uh, instead of green skin, it was like kind of disgusting yellow kind of color. Um, and it's it's very interesting, like to to read uh, what what her views on it were and how the the story has always been one of fitting in. You know, everyone and. and even of judging a book by its cover, you know, like that story has existed all the way back in the 1800s. Uh, you know, the monster just goes out and tries to fit in with everyone else, but everyone rejects him and, and turns away. Um, so it, 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 when you think about it, the more I read it, it made me feel like, oh, wow, so Frankenstein's monster was just super emo. <laughs> like, oh, I never asked to be born. Why did you do this? Because, like, you know how a lot of teenagers, when we're teenagers, we lash out at our parents a lot. Uh, like, asking, why why did you have me? Or, like, why did you, you know, why was I born? I, I didn't ask for this. None of us asked to be born. And, you know, it, it just goes to show as well, because even in Frankenstein's eyes, the the monster was that, a monster. Like, he, he kind of regretted what he had made, uh, where in a lot of incarnations he's super proud of his work. In the original novel, even he's terrified of it. And when the monster sees himself, he's also disgusted by who he is. So he, he really just does want to die. And eventually, I think he, like... I think at the end of the novel, what ends up happening is that he he flees, you know, he he actually does escape. Um, and I think even in the novel, he asks, like, make make someone for me, make uh, someone, make give me a companion. And that's where Bride of Frankenstein comes in. Again, inappropriately named, considering the monster's name is not Frankenstein. Um, but, and... and the reason why I decided to include uh, Bride of Frankenstein in the piece as well is because I've heard just how influential that film is. Like, by itself, Frankenstein was one thing, and then Bride of Frankenstein just brought up a whole new level of it, uh, of how, you know, even the Bride of Frankenstein is horrified by what Frankenstein is. And, you know, she doesn't want anything to do with Frankenstein's monster, and it's just a very, very sad, I guess, love story, we can call it, and and it, um, I think, I mostly know the film, and I got more interested in it because of Bride of Chucky, where, like, the, the parallels are huge there, and the idea of we belong dead, you know, like, we were both mistakes, but that's what makes us perfect for each other. It, it was a great movie in its own right as well, and it was... It, it to me it's always been weird just how iconic this other character is. I don't think any other aside from Chucky himself, no other character has had such a better inclusion in terms of like a love interest. Where it's like the first movie did so well on his own and then they introduced a love interest and that just made it better. Um 
But yeah, oppression, not fitting in, uh, wanting to fit in. Um, because Frankenstein was always such a nice guy. He, it's What's even funnier is that in the original novel, uh, Frankenstein's monster was super articulate. He wasn't the bumbling monster that that we all think of him as. He was very smart. He was very articulate. He didn't really know things at the beginning, but he learned very quickly. Um and I think it was because we wanted to see him as a monster that he evolved into what he is now. Um, but just the idea behind all these different social, you know, conflicts that we still see in society nowadays being covered in the 1800s was crazy. And it's funny that well, it's not funny. It's more infuriating that we haven't like been able to get past a lot of those, you know, societal problems, societal issues, judging people based on what they look like. I mean, we've gotten better at it for for sure. I'm not going to be like a lot of people say, say that, you know, things have not gotten better. Things have only gotten worse. No, things are as best as they've been in years. I th- I'm really thankful that we are where we are as a society nowadays. Um, cause I've met so many wonderful people and I, f- I feel like if I lived in any other time period, um, it would be weird that I, out of all people, was friends with them, um, and I also do know what it's like to be shunned, you know, like, I think in a way, and I've been able to relate to a lot of people that have felt the same way, you know, um, when you're a kid, it's hard to, to find other people that feel as oppressed as you do and feel as unwanted as you do and then when you become a teenager when you become an adult you somehow I I couldn't tell you how for me I think it was the internet you find a bunch of people that have been where you've been and have gotten better and you find each other and you just you become friends and that's what Frankenstein wanted Frankenstein well Frankenstein's monster wanted someone like him and you know in the movie, it happened. <laughs> in the movies, it happened. In the book, Frankenstein said no. <laughs> he didn't want to make the same mistake twice. Um, I could go on and on about Frankenstein. I've never been super fond of the character. Not that I don't like him. It's just, um, I don't know. He never particularly interested me until I did some of the research into the character. And now... Um, it's made me incredibly interested in the character. Now I want to know more about how the novel uh, went about. But this is the final piece. I really do like how it came out. Again, really without a reference, it just went by what I could remember from him. I think I make him look a little too young (laughs) and a little bit too thin, maybe even like kind of (laughs) handsome. I love the way Frankenstein's Bride came out. Uh, Again, that was just based on what I remember from that one still, like the very famous still. Uh, I don't know if I got her hair right or not. Uh, I I like her. I think she looks pretty. Um, But tomorrow we will be finishing Creepy Month 2017 with my personal favorite uh, universal monster, Count Dracula. And... Mm, I don't know if I'll go on and on about him, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll I'll talk about why he's probably my favorite one. And there's not really a reason, but <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and stay awesome. This is Chara 5 signing off. <laughs>